Hello everyone, my name is Hui Sim and thank you so much for allowing me to share with you uh, the BHL Singapore Collection. The collection consists of items contributed by the National Library Board Singapore and our partner institutions such as the Singapore Botanic Gardens and the Natural Parks Board. This collection includes a variety of historical documentation such as rare books and registers. Such documentation provides a valuable record of the flora and fauna in Southeast Asia from the 19th century to present day. Southeast Asia is one of the areas of the world with an exceptional concentration of species as most of you would know. The size of our collection at present is not large, at slightly less than 400, but it's well used. And on the right, we have our top five books that's been referred to, the top book being The Gleanings of Natural History, which is a work by the naturalist George Edwards. In terms of the collection, they can be clustered around five subject areas, which I will go through in later slides. Firstly, the history of our botanic garden. The idea of a botanical garden was first mooted in 1822 by Raffles when he proposed a piece of land near what we call Fort Canning. This idea was supported by the Danish surgeon and naturalist Nathaniel Wallach, who worked on the Royal Gardens in Calcutta in India. Unfortunately, there was a lack of interest in funding and the garden was closed soon after. Interest renewed again and Botanic Gardens was established in 1859. Some of the materials that we have here are really interesting. For example, the registers and the file notes and diaries of the naturalists and directors that worked in the gardens. The second theme is on our natural reserves. By the end of the 19th century, 90% of Singapore's primary forest cover had been lost because of intensive plantation agriculture and it resulted in forest fires and droughts. So the colonial government at that time had tasked Nathaniel Cantley, who was the superintendent of the Singapore Botanic Gardens, to reinvigorate the island's natural landscape. To this end, he established forestry programs to encourage the sustainable consumption of nature, including the gazetting of Singapore's earliest forest reserves. Here in this section, we have the report of the forest of the Strait Settlements report in 1883 that was drafted by him. The next category are books on natural history. And here we have a wide range of publications with illustrations of flora and fauna. Our last category is our ethnographic books and travel literature. These accounts describes the animals and plants encountered, but also provide second-hand information on what the local communities name these um, species of animals and plants and how they perceive nature. Of course, these will be filtered through the lens of the European authors. I'm really excited to share with you that we have just launched a new exhibition that explores the environmental histories of Singapore. While we had planned this exhibition a year ago, it's actually quite timely because Singapore has just announced its Green Plans for 2030, which is a sustainable movement to tackle climate change. The main exhibition will be held on level 10 of our National Library, but there's also an accompanying display in the lobby of our library building, which we will feature the collections of the Biodiversity Heritage Library, which we have called Library of Life. So let me give you a brief taster of the main exhibition. The exhibition explores the historical relationships that we have with nature in Singapore and how this history has shaped our present. There are three sections which I'll go through briefly. But before that, um, the exhibition actually features about 150 items. We have maps, we have books, we have prints, we have photographs, we have plant and animal specimens, majority of which comes from the collection of the National Library and the National Archives of Singapore. But also we have loans from our partners like the Lee Kong Chien Natural History Museum, as well as the Singapore Botanic Gardens and the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Singapore. The first section is titled Understanding Nature. Southeast Asia is one of the most biodiverse areas of the world. In Singapore alone, there are over 40,000 species of plants and animals. The flora and fauna of the region have been studied for centuries, and a great depth and breadth of environmental knowledge has been accumulated. 
The European study of natural history was pursued in part for scientific interests, but also for economic reasons. During these pursuits, the naturalists consistently relied on indigenous knowledge and expertise to navigate the region, collect specimens and identify and name species and their properties and uses. In other words, there was close collaboration with local communities which was crucial to the European research and data collection. This provides us an important record of the biodiversity heritage of Singapore in particular, much of which were lost due to rapid deforestation throughout the 19th century. The second section is titled Consuming Nature. For centuries, natural products such as lacquer wood was harvested in small amounts from Singapore's primary forests and traded by the indigenous Orang Laut or Sea Peoples. Before 1819, most of Singapore's primary vegetation remained pristine except for some 20 Gambia and Pepper land holdings that were cultivated by Malay and Chinese planters in the island's interior. The consumption of nature in Singapore intensified following the establishment of a British trading post in 1819. Vast swaths of primary forests were cleared to cultivate cash crops like Gambia and rubber, to build town areas as well as to have roads leading to the interior of the island. Since the founding of the trading post, environmental destruction not only decimated local flora and fauna, but also increased the encounter of humans with wildlife predators like tigers because of deforestation. The third section is called Remaking Nature. By 1965, when Singapore became independent, the island had already been heavily deforestated for almost 150 years. Less than 10% of its original primary rainforest remained, with five nature reserves that were conserved by colonial authorities. In 1967, Singapore's first Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew, implemented the Garden City vision with the aims of improving the livability of the rapidly urbanising city-state. Tree planting programmes, newly created parks and dedicated green spaces were introduced into urbanised areas. These greening efforts were accompanied by an interest in the protection of local biodiversity. The twin demands of developing essential urban infrastructure like housing and transportation and of the conservation of natural areas proved to be a difficult balancing act. This is a tension experienced by many countries, but especially acute for land-scarce Singapore. So this section will explore the balance between greening, development and the conservation of Singapore's natural landscape. So this is the gist of the exhibition. I hope you're excited to come down to visit the exhibition if you're in Singapore. Accompanying the exhibition as well, we have a variety of programs. And some of these programs, for example, our lecture series are held over Zoom. So you can join us if you're not in Singapore. So thank you very much, everyone.